In this video presentation, I'm going to show you how to fill out a W-2. A W-2 is the annual report that an employer has to send out to all of their employees that basically gives the employee the information that they need to fill out their own personal tax return. So it's got um, the W-2 includes all wage information, all taxes that have been withheld. It might include things like um, any dependent care that was withheld from your paycheck or um, any deductions for a retirement plan that was uh, withheld from your paycheck or maybe some union dues. Basically, it tells you anything that has to do with your pay. Okay. So it basically tells you your gross pay that's taxable, as well as any taxes that have been withheld or any other deductions that have been withheld. Okay, so I have given you this W-2 example in ANGEL, and, and then um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually complete a W-2. So this is what a W-2 looks like. Okay, and so we're going to actually use this W-2 example to complete this W-2. So here I've given you employer data, um, and then I've also given you employee data. So we're going to do a W-2 for Kelly Reeves. I've given you her payroll data. She's single with one allowance, so she gets paid $4.15 weekly. I've given you her Social Security number. She has a deduction for her 401k plan of $50 a week. She's had $950 in dependent care payments taken out this year, and she's also had $50 in union dues taken out of her pay this year. And then I've also given you certain uh, taxes that have been withheld, Social Security, Medicare, uh, state income tax, local income tax. And what I want to do is we're going to actually calculate the federal income tax that's going to be taken out. So first, let's do that, and then we'll complete our W-2. So here what I'm going to do is we've got $4.15 a week okay, that she gets paid. Now, one thing, we need to take out anything that is not taxable before we calculate our tax. So here, we've got this deduction for 401k. Well, that is going to come out pre-tax. So we're going to subtract out the $50, okay? And when we do that, we get, we get $365. So this is what we need to look for on our wage bracket table. Okay, so again, she gets paid weekly and she's single. So what I've done is I've come here and I've got the single weekly wage bracket. So this is from your, um, your tax tables in Appendix T in your textbook. And again, we're looking for 365. And how many withholding allowances did she have? Just one, okay? So then we're gonna come here, we get 365. We've got one withholding allowance, so therefore her um, tax per week is 29, okay? So we're going to come back. We've got 29 per week, but again, the W-2 is an annual form, so 29 a week times 52 weeks would give us 1508 for the year, okay? So that's our, our fit. It's going to be 1508, okay? All right, so let's look at our W-2. First, let's um, just fill in the, the easy stuff, okay? First, in box A, you want to put in the employee social security number. So I gave that to you as, turn this on, 0008804, okay? And then um, in box B, you've got your employer identification number. I gave you that here as uh, 00000972. So let's add that in. Okay. And then the employer's name and address and zip code, I gave you all of that information here. So we can add that in. It's Queens Corp. And on 4800 River Road, and that's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19113. Control number is something that is for the employer. So let's say you had 265 employees. Um, you might want to put, okay, this is employee number one. 
okay? Um, so the IRS doesn't really worry about these control numbers so much. This is, again, for the employer to kind of keep track of their W-2s, okay? And then we've got Kelly Reeves, put her name there. I told you that she lives at 54 Grayson Place in Philly. And so that's in Philadelphia and 19113, okay? So that's all you have to do for that, okay? So now let's get back over to these boxes um, for the numbers, okay? So the first box is all about our wages, okay? So here what you're doing is you are putting in what is what are our taxable wages for federal income tax. So if we look back over here, she gets $4.15 a week, but remember, part of this $4.15 is not taxable. $50 of it is not taxable. Dependent care payments and union dues do not affect the taxability of your, um, of your wages, okay? But this deduction for 401k plan, that is not taxable. So therefore, we need to take, come here and take $4.15 minus 50, and again, that was 365. And how often did she get paid that? Weekly, so 365 times 52 weeks means that her annual salary that's taxable was 18,980. So I'm gonna come back over here and put in our 18,980, okay? And then we already calculated the federal income tax withheld. What did we calculate it as? 1508. Okay, so I'm going to come here. My federal income tax is 1508. Okay, now for Social Security, uh, the 401k deduction is not going to affect that. Okay, so uh, Social Security, uh, all of your wages are taxable for that. Okay, the, the, even the ones that are deducted for your retirement plans. So let's figure out how much is taxable for that. So in that case, we've got 415 times 52, okay, because she gets paid 415 a week. And so, therefore, her salary before any 401k deductions was 21580 So we'll come back here, 21580 okay. And then um, let's put in our Social Security tax withheld. It's 133796 I got that by just taking the 21580 times 6.2%. And so, therefore, that was $13.37.96. The Medicare wages and tips is going to be the same taxable amount as Social Security because she has not met the cap. If she had met the cap for Social Security, you would only put the cap amount here, $113,700 in 2013. Okay? And so, it'd be $21,580. And Medicare withheld is $313.04. Uh, Um, she didn't have any Social Security tips or allocated tips, but she did have dependent care benefits. We had dependent care benefits of how much? $950 for the whole year. So we'll put in $950 here. Okay. You don't have to worry about box 11 for non qualified plans, but box 12A, 12B, and 12C, and 12D are all for things that um, are informational to the uh, taxpayer, so to your employer. So there is actually in your book, okay, um, the uh, reference guide for box 12 codes. Let me see what page this was on. Sorry, I don't remember. So 423 is where this is. And so what you're going to do is these are box 12 codes. So this is informational. And so for um, Kelly Reeves, she had a 401k uh, withdrawal every paycheck. And so what we can do is we can tell her about that. Okay. So we can put, okay, uh, code D. And so then she'll know that that is a section 401k cash or deferred arrangement and then come back over here and put how much. So how much was taken out? Uh, 50 a week. So 50 times 12 is going to give you, I'm sorry, times 12. Not times 12. 50 times how many weeks are in a year? Oop. 52. So 50 times 52 is going to be 2,600. Okay? So 
Therefore, I'm going to come here and I'm going to put a code D here and then 2600. So therefore, that means she knows that, okay, 2600 was taken out from my 401k. Let's look back at these 12, box 12 codes. There's other things that you might see are group term life insurance over 50000 That becomes taxable in that case um, if the employer is paying for it. Um, maybe you have a SEP plan or a 403B instead. Or maybe you have a simple plan, so it would be code S. Okay. Maybe you have a health savings account deduction, so that would be code W. All right, so this is, if you have a Roth 401k, it's going to be code AA, okay? So these are, um, it's basically just for informational things that the employer probably wants to know about, okay? And so you use these codes to kind of help, help you make it more succinct on your W-2. All right, also, she has a retirement plan, so I'm going to come here and check retirement plan. And you could have multiple codes. If she had a health savings account as well, you'd also put a code for the health savings account and the amount. So you could have multiple um, codes and boxes here for, for box 12. And then for box 14, this is other kind of information that you might want to put. Maybe they, um, maybe the employer paid uh, some of their education, uh, maybe they got educational assistance, okay? Or maybe in our case, uh, she had union dues taken out, and that doesn't affect her taxes, but it might, she might, um, or, or it doesn't affect how, how much tax um, she had taken out here, or what, how much of her wages was taxable, but she might be able to take a deduction or a credit or something like that for them on her tax return, so it's good to um, inform an employee about it. So we're going to add union dues here in box 14 and just put the amount, which was $50, okay? So that's just kind of other as a complementary kind of thing to your um, to your employer employees. Okay. So then we've got um, uh, our W two also is sent to the state. Okay. And so for here we're going to include state things on there. So here we're in Pennsylvania, and then up here I gave you the Pennsylvania state identification number. So we'll add that in. Okay, and the state wages and tips, we're going to assume that it's the same as what your Social Security or Medicare is. I don't know what the um, 401k rules are for Pennsylvania, so we're going to assume that it's that. And then our state income tax, I told you, was, if we look down here, is 662.48. Okay, and then uh, we don't have this in Georgia, but some places have a local income tax, like in New York, they even have a borough income tax, but obviously Philadelphia has a local income tax. So Pennsylvania has their, their tax, and then Philadelphia has their own, like, city tax. And so here are taxable wages, again, are 21580 and then the amount withheld was 847.60. And then you might want to put uh, the locality name, which in this case would be Philadelphia. And so that is how you, how you complete a W-2.